ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the cs tv i'm your host kathleen egal toto madam cs and this is the striker stay tuned and have it through and true in the striker today we are going to look at how things are shambolic and not working within the kenya kwanza coalition and the government right from the proposed impeachment of governor johnson sakaja to the warning that the catholic bishops of uh in kenya gave to president ruto and his government the reactionally we know messages from different ministries to the warnings that are being given to kimani ichungwa you know they say celebration is short-lived and indeed for kenya kwanza their celebration is kind of coming to an end but before that if you are new to this particular channel kindly welcome home Karibu nyumbani. Remember to subscribe, like, share and comment on our videos and also turn on the notification bell so that the next time we are doing a video, YouTube will automatically um uh, notify you. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for your support. Thank you for tuning in. Kindly remember to like, share and comment on this particular video especially on the things that you actually want us to analyze. Now, they say masa ni machache mambo ni umengi like time is very limited but things are a lot in this particular context actually in the last like three days things have not been cozy within the kenya kwanza administration you know it all started honestly by the church you know the catholic bishops of kenya actually gave their statement yesterday and in their statements they are highlighting issues that the kenya kwanza government has failed the citizens you know and kept promises political angles service interests and that message from the kenya kwanza from the catholic bishops seemed not to sit well with the catholic bishop, with the with the legim of today and we have seen the likes of kimani ichungwa actually responding to that particular message and we saw kimani ichungwa saying that the catholic bishops should actually List the names of corrupt members of parliament. You and me knows. Do you think that there's no member of there's a member of parliament who will not feature in that particular corruption list? Is what Kimani Ijing were asking actually even practical? Like, okay, my question is if those names come, will they be able to internalize those names of the corrupt people? And you know, some citizens reacted, especially in Twitter, and some were saying, Kimani Ijingwa, don't ask. The catholic bishops to give you the names of corrupt members of parliament because corrupt is you have normalized the culture of corruption just ask the catholic bishops to give you the names of members of parliament who are not corrupt you no know, that one speaks volumes as to why kimani chungu actually chose to respond to that i don't understand to an extent even responded to the 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 proposed bill to increase the presidential term limit and it was like you know you the catholic bishops why is, is the private dead pill finding its way to the to your statement the question is did actually kimani Ichungu or the government of kenya stand somewhere and tell kenyans there was a proposed bill to amend the constitution to change it, the term limit from five to seven and now the constitution that bill is does not does not exist anymore why should they wait until the cattle bishops have spoken actually that is the time now they want to come out and defend themselves and you know from where i stand first i feel like the kenya kwanza government you know is losing a lot you know ever since the beach dikashawa president ruto rose to the support of the mountain you know he chose a very unpopular candidate kindiki is not popular he was not popularly you know elected in a universal suffrage ex exercise so he's not a popular candidate and he's not even a, a popular politician in the mountain so ruto lost already the mountain and then now another support base he had was the church you know the way they have been running to the church michango to the church Waumbewa, you know all those things and now this is the church it all started with i've seen some protestant churches from the past actually telling the president he need to put his house in order and we even saw after the impeachment of gashawa the way some church members came and told regarding the president that actually you are digging a own your own grave that you will enter politically you know and that they don't trust ruto anymore so imagine Ruto losing the support of Mount Kenya and Ruto losing the support of the church, you know? That's like losing two significant pieces. And I wonder, when Kimani Chung wants the Kenyans to trust him, 
Now put yourselves, tell me, if the president, if the, if the, if the Kenyans are to choose between trusting their pastors and trusting the politicians, who do you think they are going to trust? Remember, it's only in Kenya where when, whenever pastor says is the truth. So you can be sure, sure that most of the congregants are going to listen to their pastors. And if the pastors are going to say we are not going to vote for Ruto, one reason Ruto gained popularity and you know one elections in 2022 let's not lie to each other it was all about the mountain and it was all about the church those were two important factors for president ruto now that he has lost the mountain and is losing the church me and you can imagine how he will struggle replacing regard the with the kindiki you know replacing regard the with the Papa who has been losing elections all of three, he has never won an election. And if he has ever, ever won, he has never stood firm to fight for that particular victory and ascend into that particular seat of a president. Now you understand where I'm coming from. And I'm like, now which support places actually does President Ruto has? Right now, he's fighting the, the church now back right and center. We saw how the likes of Kimani Chunga, the way they, they reacted. We saw how the Ministry of Health reacted. We saw how the Inspector General of Police reacted. The Ministry of Education, like a single statement from the Catholic bishops, actually attracts at least five responses from the government. It tells you, actually, hey, you and I were party pressure. I'm telling you, where the president slept, uh -uh, he did not sleep so well. I'm so sure he's asking himself, which way will he use to find his way back to the church, you know? There's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things are happening, you know? The church is the only option he had in terms of Anapeleka Sadaka, Uko Leo, Wende Michango, Uko, that was the platform. And then all of a sudden, oh, the church is telling him his house in, is not in order. I don't know how much that the, the Ijungwa response and the other responses from the government are going to sanitize him. But what I know is that Kenyans trust, we trust pastors and, and our fathers more than we even trust ourselves. So in that particular case, I meant to understand mm -mm, things are not okay for the president. And what do you think? You know, just your comment down below. Another problem now is here. You remember Kimani Chung was celebrating, you know, the, the fall of Rigat Gashawa. And he was even castigating Ndindi Nyoro for not attending some parliamentary meetings, you know. And I've, assault, I've, I've always told you, Ndindi Nyoro seems to be, you know, like on the other side, is, is on, on the Gashawa side than on the presidency side. And Kimani Jungo was capitalizing on that. He's not coming, he's not coming, you know. He was castigating in Dindinyoro for not attending parliamentary proceedings or parliamentary sittings. Now, just the other day, he was being warned for missing a very critical parliamentary sitting that needed all the tier persons of committees and the leaders in the house you know you know you know it tells you something sometimes you can be preaching wine and you are seriously drinking water and that is kimani ichungwa and they thought like because now is you know is the best of ruto i'm the best of ruto i'm i'm pro ruto is not going to be touched the fact that kimani ichungwa has been put on notes that you skipped a very important meeting or a very important sitting in parliament it should tell him one thing what's his value in uda will come to an end the moment is done being used you know to kill some people politically in the regime he will be the next one to be buried politically by the same regime so he should think twice you know he should think twice he should ask himself this race I'm running, for how long am I going to run? From where I stand, actually, I just feel like Kimani Chungwa is being used. And soon, his value will depreciate slowly, slowly. And before he knows, Ruto will not have anything to do with him. UDA and the Kenya Kwanza thing, we do not even remember there once existed a Kimani Chungwa, the majority leader. So they only started asking myself, for how long am I going to be used to fight others? For how long am I going to use to sanitize the government? Whenever the people feel it's not operate, operational, I come to sanitize it. So I think there's something wrong. You know, in politics, nothing happens for free. When you see they have started Kukumurika, Kimani Chungwa should ask himself, how did the impeachment of Gashawa begin? 
and from there he should be able to have answers and ask himself for how long is that support for uda going to benefit him <laughs> on another thing we saw the uh, uh governor sakata actually was supposed to be a witness in the impeachment case of Ligati Gashawa. Among the things that actually sent Ligati Gashawa home is the fact that he was using his mother tongue to talk to the residents of Nairobi County, the business people, and that he incited them against the mobility they were supposed to do to allow the development of the city. So Gafana Sakacha said, you know, Ligati Gashawa is interfering with the running of this particular county <laughs> shakata forgot one thing in that county no governor has ever served twice he also forgot one thing we have the likes of mike Zongo, who actually even had you know cut their head you know with a design uhuru is innocent and yet they were impeached Nairobi count has been a count of one term and you go. If you actually succeed in finishing that one term. Now, Robert Allah is one of the MCAs in Nairobi County. And he's bringing a motion to impeach Governor Sakata. Governor Sakata celebrated that actually, Ligati Gashawa is being impeached, he's corrupt, you know. He's interfering with my county. He's not loyal to UDA. He has eaten the money of a widow. And now Sakata himself, there claims that he's buying things and the property, cash money in millions, 49 million. There is even a petrol station on your way to Radio Citizen, I don't know, Citizen TV, that he said that he bought with cash money and they are asking where does he get the money. So the same grievances, the same petitions that were being used against Rigati Kashawa. Sakasha, hello? They are coming now. The question is, will Sakata survive this? They say that Sakata is a very smart politician. Me, I will not deny. And we have seen him actually, in as much as he's in UDA, you know, he has also tried to bring the ODM people into his governance in Nairobi County. And therefore, somehow he's in good terms both UDA and ODM. But you know, politics is a game of interests, and the ODM could be glad to have that position back. And if impeaching Sakata is an opportunity to have that position back, they will do it and they will impeach him very early in the morning. So from where I, I, I stand, in as much as he thinks he's in good terms with Port ODM and UDA, from where I stand, those UDA members of parliament can as well fought for against, fought against him and they impeached. And at the same time, the ODM support is very shaky, shaky. Because if politics is a game of interest, and an opportunity has presented itself for me to attain my interest, betrayal is the only constant thing. And therefore, Sakata, don't be so comfortable from where I stand. If that motion comes to parliament, honestly, or if that motion comes to, to the National Assembly, those people will beat you. It's not like in the National Assembly where you are going to say the MPs are going to, to you know, to to support you, etc. And once it enters the Senate, it may be something else. So from where I stand, you better put your house in order. And guys, what do you think? Can Sakata survive an impeachment in Nairobi County? Can he? Can he even be re-elected if he finishes the term? Do you think Kimani Ichungwa is going to survive the UDA tactics for long? And why do you think is the government so reactionary towards the Catholic bishop's uh, uh, statement? Especially, why do you think the likes of um, Oscar Sudi have chosen to single out the bishop of Nyeri in this particular statement? Why do you think? Comment on the comment section below. Let me know your opinions. Until next time with a wonderful video, subscribe and ciao, ciao.